Hello. Thank you very much for being with, uh, with me, with us, uh, um, this, uh, this moment. Um, you know what? I admire you. Oh, thank you very much. Really, because you have been done something very, very difficult. You have been done what a project so different in the market. It was different. Right now there are many people doing similar things, but tell me, what have you done? Yeah, well, I've been in the fitness industry for over 40 years, and uh, about 16 years ago, I had lost uh, a do my ideal job. I was running a very high-end fitness spa, and I was a single parent with a nine-year-old son, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what I was going to do. So I had a Pilates certification, so I actually started doing Pilates out of a spare room in my house. I built that up to a point that I ended up having so many clients that I opened up a small Pilates studio. And I loved the whole concept of me having my own business and being able to really let my mind go free and create. I have a bachelor's degree in physical education and a master's in exercise physiology, so I know the science of the human body. But a lot of times in the structured gym setup, there were things, this was how it was always done. And you kind of get stuck in that. So it was very interesting when I kind of freed my mind and myself to have my own studio. It freed a lot of creativity in my mind of how to create programming. So even in my Pilates studio, I created a lot of very unique Pilates training on the Reformer, which I still have that studio to this day. All right. And what had happened was my members were coming to me, mainly women, and they were frustrated there there was no fat burning work with mm -hmm, Pilates. Mm -hmm. And they were working and they were doing cycling classes, they were working with personal trainers, they were running, and they weren't getting the results they wanted metabolically from their body. So I decided, okay, I'll go take my Pilates studio, I'll open up a little bigger space, and I'll put another room in it, and I'll create what in my head I thought the ideal metabolic training workout would be. And I knew it had to have certain components. I knew the heart rate, I needed to get it up over 84% of maximum heart rate for at least 12 minutes in order to metabolically charge the body. I knew that I needed to put power in the body. So for example, CrossFit uses explosive jumps up and down off of boxes. Well, my knees were no longer interested in that. And I didn't <laughs> think there were a lot of people. That's a, that's a select population that likes that. So I had to program for my varied level of women in my Pilates studio. So I had to figure out what would I do for power. Ah, and I found these rowers that no one was ever using rowing at all. Not, going not back any Unes, yeah. No one was using them. And I went, I'm going to put rowers in there and use that as non impact power. Beautiful. And then I knew that I wanted, because of my Pilates training, I wanted to get those inside stabilizer muscles in condition. So this gentleman created the TRX straps, and I said, oh, perfect, I can use those for those inside stabilizer muscles. And then I knew I wanted to use small gym equipment, med balls, and uh, uh, dumbbells for muscle overload. And I just put the room together, and I started creating workouts and my members got the most extreme results I had ever seen in the many decades that I have been in this business. And I've taught everything you can imagine on the aerobic floor, as well as personal trained members. This is not the, the real business. The real business is, you, you have done one more step ahead. You, you have done something very different. Created, uh, well, how I look at it is, um, we've created our own fitness category. So this is an entirely new fitness category of interval training. And it's all those components that were in my head that I just wanted my Pilates women, because I knew if they would do this on top of the Pilates they're doing, they would get the fat burning result, because it's all based on science. There's nothing that I created, not a fancy hula hoop, not another piece of fitness equipment that people are saying does magical things. I just use good old fashioned uh, physiology that I learned in college many decades ago of how to train the human body 
and used equipment that we've been using for decades in a gym, some of it like a rower that no one even touched before. And I just put that into a room and created programming around it. Yeah, I mean, the point is that your product was good, but what about your marketing, your strategy? Yeah, so this is the more powerful what thing. What happened was uh, one of my members came into me and she said her husband was in the franchising. And she said she thought this would be a great idea for us to meet because this would be wonderful to franchise. I didn't know anything about franchising. I, as a matter of fact, said, I don't think I'm interested because I know nothing about franchising. Luckily, she came back and we had a second conversation. So we ended up meeting with her husband and his partner, and that's when we formed um, you know, our union to take this, put a pilot studio together, and see what we could develop. I often call my partners the perfect storm, which is a very important part yeah. of developing any business. So I had the fitness expertise, and then Jerome Kern, who was one of, our, who still is one of my partners, he just was an expert in um, franchising and sales. And then Dave Long, who was his partner, is our CEO, and he was the steady as we go, build the business, and you know keep the ship moving. So the three of us really had all kinds of different expertise that worked very, very well. And then we brought in Dave Hardy, who is very much in the fitness world. Uh, Dave owned a chain of gyms in Canada. We brought him in for his expertise. And the four of us have really, you know, allowed us to take the branding, the ideas, the concept, the marketing, and put all of our minds in our own individual right, you know, together to create this great movement. And it's truly a movement. So you have very different people yeah. with different, different ideas and different, It has different... worked very well. Okay. It has worked very, very well. Because if you and I know the same thing, we're both fitness experts, but we don't have great experience in franchising or branding or sales, we're going to get stuck. We're only going to go so far. So I often say, definitely the product, which has to be amazing, which we've got, but there's a lot of amazing products that don't go anywhere. Okay. This is the, uh, for me, this is the main point because Your brand is so power, has so much, so much power uh, that the, the product is good because you are giving results. Right. This is the main point. Right. But all the marketing that you have, all the strategy that you have, it, the, this the is key the key. is the developing of the culture. And we're a small footprint, about 3,000 square feet. So our members, and I think timing is very interesting because today everything's so desensitized and we can't even get a human being on the phone and everyone's with all, you know, the phones and this and that, whatever, that I think people really like coming into a small knit community and they know, and I know you take class with me every morning at 5 a.m. and are you going to be there tomorrow? And we're, we're bringing back a lot that we have lost in the wonderful world of technology that we live in, but there are some things that we have lost from that. And I think our small footprint brings that back, where the gym has great difficulty with that. It's too big. You can't have that front desk person know everyone's name, know that your daughter just got married last week. We can do that, and we do do that, and people love that. Do you think we are at the beginning of the Orange Theory history, or we are just in the middle? We're in the be beginning. In the beginning. We're in the beginning. We have 600 studios open. We've sold over a thousand. Uh, we believe we're about a 5,000 studio footprint. Um, we're going to be in 20 international countries by the end of next year. To see this in Japan, to see this done in different languages, it, It's uh, unbelievable to me, mm -hmm. um, you know, where, again, I started with this little concept in a little studio, and to think that, you know, people in Kuwait are doing it today as we speak. Okay. Women in Kuwait who are walking in, covered totally, we yeah. have to cover the windows in the studio there, and they do this workout. That's amazing to me. Okay. You have, you have uh, had to 
uh, change a little bit your the, the Nothing idea? Nothing changes. Nothing changes. The routines are so sound based on how the human body physiology is. Unless the human body changes physiologically, <laughs> the workout doesn't it's have to right. change. All of the routines are developed by myself and a team at the corporate office in Florida. And we send the routines, new routine every day, we send it to the studios every month. The problem in fitness is we have an unregulated industry. Even massage therapy, you have to go and get, pass a license, a test. In fitness, I have eight years of college. You could go get a fitness certification this weekend on the web, and we both have business cards that say fitness professional on it. That's a problem. Yeah. The consumer yeah. doesn't know. It's a very different, vast different. knowledge. So our product, everyone who comes in and takes a class knows that it's developed at a very high, high level mm -hmm. based on science. I have a medical advisory board of cardiologists, of top end physical therapists. They review all of the workouts. We test all the workouts to see if the heart rate response is going to give the accurate heart rate response. It's very difficult to do. It's very extreme to do, but that's why many people who try to duplicate what we do have great difficulty. Okay, I don't want just to, 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 to spend more time for, for your time. Um, what, um, what book did you recommend? So I actually wrote a book, it's called Push. Push. It's on Amazon and it talks about someone who's been in the fitness industry for four decades, why I think fitness is not working for many people anymore over the last five, 10 years. What I felt that people have not been getting, they're going in the gym and they're not coming out with the results that they want. So I talk about that in the beginning and then I talk about what I did in this workout to change that. Okay. And then the second half of the book is more inspirational. And it's about the life lessons that I went through that pushed me, some very uncomfortable moments in my life like when I got like, lost my job and I had a nine-year-old and I had to figure out how to push through life, very uncomfortable, just like workouts sometimes, very uncomfortable to go to the next level, to live what I'm in great mm -hmm. gratitude to be living a wonderful life today. And that's for anyone. Yeah, sometimes this moment. It, it's okay to be uncomfortable. We shouldn't fear being uncomfortable. We should sometimes look for it because many times it can bring you to the next level. This is true. <laughs> Absolutely. So I have to ask you one personal question. Okay. Okay. Where, what are you wearing when you go to bed? When I go to bed. Well, I want to be extremely comfortable. So I have my favorite, I probably have six different nightgowns and shirts and long shirt, t-shirts and this and that. But I have like two that tend to be my favorite. One is very worn t-shirt that's very, very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And one's a nightgown that again, it doesn't sound too appealing, but I've had it forever. <laughs> but you know that comfortable feeling And when I put my head down on that pillow and I want to go to sleep, I want to sink in ultimate comfort, physically and mentally. I'm mental. So thank you very much. It has been great. Two kisses. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs>